I was very pressed for time between sports and research and work and studies. And so I ended up only having three weeks to study for the EPCAT. So as a result, I really had to buckle down on staying calm in such a short time and having the confidence to make the most out of every day and still get to a point where I was happy with my exam. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma Jane, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to stay calm and confident as you're preparing for the MCAT. So when I reflected on what helped me do this, I came up with four words that were really key to my journey. Reflect, plan, trust, and take agency. So the first one of these, reflect, is definitely the key first step. And there's two types of reflection that are really important. The first one is reflecting on why you're sitting down to take this very long test in the first place. So why do you want to be a doctor? What motivates you? In those stressful moments, it's easy to feel like you're forgetting why you're doing this in the first place. So it's important to remember that you're the only one who's making you do this and that you have personal and very strong reasons for wanting to pursue this test. The second part of reflection is about your own study habits and what works best for you. Are you someone who likes to cram things in and works better under pressure? In which case, maybe a shorter time frame for studying for the MCAT, but with more intensive studying will work better. Or are you someone who does best when you have the balance and are able to take things a little bit slower? In which case, maybe it's better to integrate your studying within with the other activities in your life. Regardless of what makes most sense for you, this reflection is important because in order to stay calm, you need to know yourself and know that you can and will do what's best for you. The other critical component of staying calm and confident is to have a plan. Planning means you know either you know how many practice tests you want to take, how many hours you want to study a day, how many questions you want to get through, whatever it is. It's important to have a plan and stick to it because if you do, you can stay calm and not have to spend that time worrying, am I doing the right thing? Do I know what I'm going to do today? Right? Because you already know, you already laid it out. For you. It's also important to note that the plan is informed by your reflection, right? So going back to my own study habits, I know that I work best under intense. So for me, it was the best plan to study for a shorter period of time, but study for 14 hours a day. But for some people, that might not work. And maybe it's better for you, again, to have more of a balance. So the plan is truly informed by reflection and knowing yourself. Another important part of planning is knowing what the other non-negotiables are in your life. So for me, I'm a runner, I'm an athlete, I need to run every day, I need to work out in order to be able to then sit down and study for the rest of it. So whatever that is for you, whether it's exercising, whether it's spending time with friends, whether it's reading a book, whatever it is, make sure to plan that in as well, because that is especially critical for that calm, because if you are the best version of yourself, you're not gonna be able to do the best on this test. So the third piece, and the one that I think is the most important, is trust. And this trust is truly critical for that confidence. And the trust is in a lot of different things. The first one is in yourself. So knowing again that you are backed by your motivations and your past experiences to be able to nail this test. And trust also that you have studied hard, you have taken all of these classes that were designed to prepare you for this exam. So trust your own background and trust all the work that you put in previous. This goes along with taking pride, taking pride in the exams that you've taken on these same topics in the past, taking pride on your own ability to learn and adapt to new situations and also taking pride in that you want to be someone who is going to nail this exam regardless of your own you know past experiences or regardless of what you think you're going to do or how you think you're going to perform the other part of trust is in the exam itself this is very new for us but this is truly a passage based exam so it's important to trust the information in the passage and trust that they are testing you on questions that you are prepared to answer. And this, I think, is the hardest one to master. It's way easier said than done, but it, for me, is really what turned it around and what helped me increase my score was to realize and trust how much information was in the passage and how little I needed to have all of these facts memorized. It also goes down as well to trusting your own strategies, trusting that there is a way to answer questions, even if you haven't memorized every single carbohydrate, or even if you don't remember every single detail from maybe the textbooks you've read. Trust that maybe the information is in the passage. Don't jump right away to, oh, maybe I just don't know this, or I didn't study it. No, instead, try to interrogate those questions, go back to the passage, and trust that this is a passage-based exam that you are prepared to try to get. And the last piece of trust that I'll speak to is trusting that you can be a 
good guesser. Ultimately, no matter how long you study, you're still going to have passages and questions that are completely unfamiliar to you. So you need to trust yourself and your ability to kind of reason and work with what you do know to answer something that you don't know. And I thought about this a lot as I was studying was that if I want to be a doctor, I need to be someone who can adapt to a situation where I'm being interfaced with information that is new to me and trust my past knowledge and my ability to problem solve and work with what I have. And I imagine wanting and being able to do this as a doctor. This exam is an opportunity for you to show your own adaptability and your own kind of perseverance in the face of the unknown, whether it's a passage or a question. And the last one is to take agency. And this is very similar to the first one, but another kind of punch in the gut, I think, to give yourself every single day. You chose to do this. You know, you're the one who wants to sit down and take this test and you're buying yourself with this, right? So for me, that was making little post-it notes to remind myself, you know, you love science, you chose this, you want to be a doctor and putting myself in a situation that motivated me. So when I studied, I went to the hospital and studied in the hospital clinic library every day because that was a motivating space for me. And it reminded me why I was there and helped me really take agency over the exam. And maybe for you, it's something similar. Maybe it's something different so write those down, take the time to think about that, and then remind yourself of those every single day because that is really what's going to fuel you through such a long test. The last piece that I'll say about taking ownership is take ownership over who you want to be. So visualize yourself as that person who can study in the amount of time that you're given or who can turn whatever your undergrad GPA was into a great MCAT score. Visualize yourself being that person. You know, what would you tell other people? Just think of that person because you can be that person. And so much I think of the MCAT um, journey and also just the med school journey overall, we all just have so much imposter syndrome and we can't imagine ourselves as the person who can succeed or we feel really stuck in who we think we were in the past, be it grades, background, experience, whatever it is. So it is important to take agency over who you want to be and to allow yourself and trust yourself to be that person. With that, I'll say good luck with your studying. I hope that these tips will help you stay calm and confident because ultimately all you can do is take it day by day and every day you are able to learn something new. So stay focused on that and good luck with your studying.